So really quickly, I just wanted to make a video showing uh, what's the difference between a blown pyro fuse and a regular pyro fuse. Um, these are both from a Mercedes E350 Cabrio 2014. Um, my car is right here. It has this style of headlight. It's a little hard to see the whole car, but like the, my car is, it wasn't an accident. And um, I had to change the pyro fuse, so... I got the new fuse, this is the new one, and this is the old one. So the new fuse on its own, they don't sell the fuse. They sell it with the wire that goes all the way to the starter, I believe. And I I tried to remove the whole wire from this car, but it just ended up being a pain. It was not, it, it, I, it's not really easily accessible. So I thought I'll just cut off the wire from the, from the end of this, and then I'll just crimp it back into this making it easier so um since i have both the fuses here now i wanted to make a video showing what's inside of them i was just curious so i opened this one as well there's a there's some like rivets that go in here um they're they're they look like this they they go inside and then they're flattened on the sides so anyways this is the new one Oh, let me just get the cover off. The cover just slides off once you get the rivets out. And so there's a bottom cover. Then this is the old one. And here you go. You can take off the top cover and take off the top cover on this as well. Now, if you see inside, that's the new one. This is the old one this if you look closely in the new one it's like you don't see any gap it looks like it's like really pressure fitted in there um what i've read online is that inside this chamber right here there's a gas and then this sparks the gas and then that pushes this out but in the used one this is already out if you look inside this cover, this cover goes on like this. There's there's these two slanted clips. So when this piece slides out of this, see this is in in here like this originally, and then it slides out with the explosion. So when it slides out, it locks over there, which separates the connection to the starter. So then the car won't start anymore. And um what I did is I tried to plug this back in and then put this to a battery terminal back and tried using it. But unfortunately, the car still says pyro fuse blown. Um, I believe that's because in here, if we look in here now, it's a little hard to see. It's a bit dark. Here, let me turn on the flashlight. So... So in here, the little capsule or whatever it was that exploded of gas, it's blown. And so the resistance isn't accurate anymore. So there's a company in Georgia that does repair these. And they just put a new capsule in there, I think, to blow it up. Because this thing is actually very similar to a seatbelt seat belt, um pretensioner or even a uh yeah yeah just seat belt pretensioner so that's why i think it's very easy for them to do this um so um i decided that there's no other way i can do this that i know of so i bought a new pyro fuse this new one with the whole cable was about um was about eighty dollars, eighty five dollars from Mercedes. Um, I I found a website online. It's called OEMVehicleParts.com, and they sold it to me for about eighty five dollars. Um, I found some we using the part number. I found some, um, like aftermarket ones from, from China. They were for like fifty to sixty dollars and. Even on Alibaba, you can get them. So fifty to sixty dollars is the aftermarket one. The only reason I didn't buy that is because I, uh, I guess like 
this car is one that I really want to enjoy. I don't really, I, I don't, I don't know. Normally, I would be okay with buying aftermarket parts, but I guess I was like, oh, I'm already ordering from Mercedes, so might as well order these too. So, if I wasn't ordering anything from Mercedes, then I probably would have got that um, aftermarket from e eBay or Alibaba. Um, when I plug in the new pyro fuse, it does work. It, the error code goes away and everything, so it's fine. So, yeah, I just wanted to show a video of how it works. Um, what I did is I, I cut this off of the new cable and then I drilled it out. So I I drilled out the whole like solder that they had in there. It was it was a really high heat solder because it was not melting with my standard soldering iron. So I just I drilled it out and it's pretty clean now. So uh, um, I cut this line down the middle just so that I can have more access um, while I'm drilling and cleaning it out. Um, for this one, I will. I will do the same, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this out to Mercedes uh, to the uh, my airbags in Georgia, and I'll have them uh, change out the explosive inside and fix it for me. Because if they can do that, then um, I have one brand new, um, a brand new pyrofuse, and I can uh, I'll sell this or use it on a different car. I don't know. Um, seventy five dollars isn't too bad, and I have to send some other things to them anyway. So, whenever I do that, I'll just send it along with that. There's no rush because I'm gonna use that one. So, whenever I send out things next, I'll just add this in the package. It doesn't cost anything to ship. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful because it took me a long time to realize what was going on inside the pyrofuse. If you want to temporarily start your car even with the errors you can you can do this um you don't actually have to open it the way i did because these these two slanted flaps these are accessible from the outside you just have to put a screwdriver or something and separate them and then push the push this piece back into place and then you should be able to start your car so i learned this this way anyways um thanks for watching hope you found it helpful see you